Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Prospects and Show One. My name is Chris, and today joining me we have Braden, and we're going to be watching a little bit of Tristan Colon Castillo. Uh, he is an offensive lineman who, in this database, is listed as a center from the University of Missouri, and he is mm -hmm. a fourth-year junior who is declared early. Uh, so he's someone who is officially entering the 2020 NFL Draft, who's not a senior. And he's listed unofficially at 6'3", 200, or, wow, I just said 200, 315 pounds. So, uh, not that I expect you to be familiar with a ton of individual offensive linemen, especially at this stage, but have you ever heard of him before? I can't, uh, I can't say I do, but, but... The fact that he's from Missouri gives me some hope, since gives me hope. You should be somewhat familiar with Missouri players after taking Drew Locke last year. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, no, never, nope, yep. Yeah, that's why it said give me some hope. It, by, by, by state law, all, Miz, all Missouri players can't suck, so. <laughs> yeah, that's actually, yes, Green, that's exactly why they fired their head coach. <laughs> and I I don't I don't know so yeah I hope we kind of need a center because we have a right guard that's playing center right now because Matt Parrott is left and it's turned out to be pretty bad in Carolina from what I'm hearing. Yeah, Panther said is not a fan. That's tough. Anyway, but yeah, we need a center, so I, I I'm gonna be interested in this one. Very nice. Well. Uh, this should be interesting. We have two games, and the other aspect of this, too, is he is an SEC player, so unfortunately we don't have two of the better SEC teams, but uh, typically SEC and Big Ten are your stereotypical better offensive line-producing conferences. So this should be interesting from that standpoint as well. The other aspect of this in watching offensive line is you also tend to get a little bit longer games. So we should get a little bit better sample size uh, in terms of a potential evaluation. So before we begin, this is full offensive line tape. So we will look and see. Uh, in the description, it'll say the center. If you say it, I'm just trying to find the description. You passed it. Go up. Oh, there it is. Uh, 55. He 55. is. Okay. okay. So there you guys go on that. Ready to go into it? Yes. Awesome. So this is 2019 table. These games will be, which means no Drew Lock at quarterback, unfortunately. Tough. Thank you, computer. Very cool. Yeah, it normally styles things later. There we go. Okay, look to be running more of his own scheme. Oh, yuck. I mean, it was a screen. At least. Yeah. <laughs> I was worried for a second there. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Yeah. I was uh, yeah, for a second before I recognized the screen, I was like, um, all right, we can turn <laughs> off the film right now. <laughs> I was like, all right, I think I I've I've seen what I need to see. <laughs> Have you ever done that before? You go. Have you ever done that before where you pull up a random prospect you never really heard of? You see one play and you're like, okay, this guy sucks, turning it off. <laughs> I've never actually turned it off before, but like, the, yeah, that first play is kind of like a really weird impression sense. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that like once where I saw one play and I was like, okay, yeah, we're, we're, we're good. There's no recovering from that. Speaking of recovering... Not exactly the same thing, but his ability to finish and play through the whistle uh, is definitely something that stuck out a little bit so far. <laughs> I 
He has a little bit of a mean streak in him. Okay, nice anchor. Pretty good hand placement. You should have getting inside the shoulder pads. Same thing. Very nice. Great job of staying engaged without holding. Does a really nice job of bring, bringing his guy inside to open up that lane to the outside. Shoulder. Nice second level. I kind of like this. So this is a very interesting play. At first, he's going to kind of get knocked back with his first initial quick punch. But then he does a really nice job of recovering leverage and forcing his guy to that outside shoulder away from the run and angling that play nicely. Very interesting. Big push. That did not happen. I think the main thing, because he did a really nice job of anchoring here, they just kind of want to see him be a little bit more upright, but on the other hand, that was probably designed that way, so that the ring back would go over the top. So kind of hard to say. That was a disaster of play call. I don't know what they were doing. They were all over that. So either that was a terrible play action call or that was one of the worst decisions to keep in my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> or both. I mean, it could have been a terrible play call and a terrible decision. Yeah. Okay. Nice uh, decision there, I guess I'll call it, in terms of field vision and blocking. Same thing. So a really nice job of getting up to second level from, from a mobility standpoint. Nice job using the eagle there. Right here, redirecting outside, and he's really doing a nice job of forcing that outside. The patience. Drew Locke would have made that throw. Drew Locke would have made all the throws. You know that. Yes. So I actually really like this play from Colon Castillo. He has a really nice job of staying engaged, but he's not holding either. He's doing a really nice job of staying disciplined and not getting his hands up too high for a potential hands to the face. He's doing a really nice job with his hand positioning uh, to where he's able to stay engaged without without committing holding. So that's really nice to see. From a personal experience vibe, he's kind of giving me a lot of Mason Cole feelings here. Which is a pretty good thing, because I'm pretty sure Mason Cole's been doing pretty good in Arizona. And Javon Kinglaw's a beast, too. He's one of my higher grade players in the class. Nice mobility. Didn't block well in space, but... Good patience. Good field vision IQ. Love the aggressiveness factor. Okay. Not be on the swing at the end, but still very nicely done. Same thing. Well, not seen his last play, but still very nicely done. I love, oh yeah, and then the finish too. I really like what he's able to do on this play. 
right, just does a really nice job of getting a hold of the shoulder pads, and he's staying engaged throughout the entire process without holding. Love that. And then the finish, too. He's getting a little bit of drive at the end of the play. Same thing. A little bit of a hold at the end. They're not going to call that. He's doing a really nice job of being engaged. Nice recovery, great anchor. Oh, look at that blocking. That was a terrible throw. Look at the blocking. <laughs> I love how you're like, wow, great blocking. That's a god-awful throw. Wow, look at that. <laughs> like that just casual, like, oh, that was a terrible throw. Well, yeah, because we're not watching the quarterback. but Yeah. Still, I really, really like what he's doing from a, from a core standpoint. Definitely comes off very strong. Love the hand placement. He's doing a great job staying engaged throughout the course of the play. It gives his QB plenty of time. Excellent, excellent work. Yeah, second level. Ugh, he is not good in space. It's like he can get up there, no problem. It's just actually blocking is uh, not good. Yeah, it's just the blocking and space thing. TJ Hawkinson struggled with that last year, too. I was doing the video with Carson on him. Well, to, to be fair to Hawkinson, he's a tight end, not a center. Right, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I can be a little more forgiving to Hawkinson on that one. But, yeah, in a phone booth, he's doing a really nice job here. I'm mean, Even against uh, one of the better offense or defensive lineman prospects at times when he goes up against him in Kinglaw. He's actually holding his own pretty well. Same thing there. Like, really nice anchor. He's not giving up much pocket push. Nice transition. Oh, my goodness. That's not a penalty. That's a god-awful call. Oh, in your game? Yeah. I like the way that he utilizes this angle. He realizes that 59 has given up that leverage, so he comes across to take that and double, and it keeps him from making a play. That's really nicely uh, awareness, really nicely done from an awareness standpoint there. Oh, blocking in space, man. Seal blocking is non-existent. Nice recovery. Love how he comes off this blitz, right? So he initially kind of gets uh, the whole offensive line. Kind of gets thrown off a little bit by this overload. Uh, SC sends four guys to the, the three-man side. And yet he's still able to kind of redirect and angle that rusher to the outside. That's a great job utilizing his angle. Oh, just blocking in space. Come on. Oh. Oh, you open up that lane? No. Okay. Same that was thing pretty decent. Angle. Does a really nice job of redirecting the defender to the outside. So in this, the in this FCS game, to be fair, it's snowing, but this may be the worst quarter of football I've seen in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> there's 30 seconds left in the quarter, and there's been a combined 30 yards of offense. Rip. Yeah, I, this is... I'm assuming it's not good defense. No, yeah. no. No, it's not. I mean, there's some good defense, but it's more. Yeah, no, it's just the conditions are not good. And it's leading to horrible football.
Nice sinker. Drive. Okay, well, I see a little bit more drive. Not a huge deal because he's really good at staying engaged and staying anchored. Uh, but still, we want to see him get a little bit more push. Same thing here. You just want to see him get a little bit further push. It's like I've noticed he has good mobility, anchor, and like recovery skills, but he can't like push and he can't like block in coverage for anything. Block in space, good lord. Yeah, you get to see this here, right? Another really good pass for upset. Just does a really nice job of keeping, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's King Law, uh, right in front of him. Yeah. And again, uh, there's a double team there, but between the two of them, that's really good pass wrap. There you go. And we're staying engaged a little bit longer, but at least he was able to get his hands on him and, and I guess mm -hmm. kind of make a little bit of a block. Oh, a slight improvement. Don't know what happened there, though. <laughs> That's, yeah. Because he's trying to open up that A gap and A. Uh, that support play is on. Nice run after catching Albert Ackerbloom. Oof. Also, I also not something that we really talk about a lot because this is a center specific thing. But so far, no issues with any snapping. Does a pretty nice job of getting that ball back quick. Yeah. Shoulder level, about right where it needs to be. Lost for a quick, quick transition for the quarterback. And. From his standpoint, he's also doing a really nice job of getting out of his st snapping stance yeah. as well uh, and recovering from that standpoint. So that's really good to see. I think his transition to center should not be too difficult. Cool. <laughs> Announce Taylor Hall, you plebs. <laughs> Uh, does a really nice job again. His pass protection has been really solid so far. It's more so the run blocking that you want to see a little bit more work with. Okay, the, again, improvement a little bit better here. You get to see him on this pull. He doesn't, he's not able to seal, unfortunately, but he does enough to be able to stay engaged and delay that reaction. So we're seeing a little bit of improvement there. Nice recovery. Oh, missed him. Ah. Good boy to call. Oh, my. 
Yeah, that's his worst play on tape so far. Holy crap. That has to be Javon. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that is... <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he definitely was not in proper position on that particular snap. Nice cup block. Same thing. Oh, man. Just got completely destroyed at the snap point. Nice swim move by g -Bon. Okay, that's a job transitioning there. Yeah. Engagement. It seems to be doing pretty good from an upper body standpoint for the most part. I don't know. It's like... He seems like he can do fine. Like, there's stuff you can like, like... For example, as a center, I can't remember any bad snaps. Right. So there's that. I mean, he had good anchor. He has some recovering skills, and he ha has mobility. It's just blocking in space is very much not ideal also. And then also, like, doesn't seem to get a whole lot of push. It's just he doesn't seem a whole lot of push. He just anchors and stuff, if that makes sense. Yeah. Which, you know, don't get me wrong, having a good anchor is good, but... And it opens up things like that, because he doesn't really have shot with his angles, no. too. Which is kind of interesting, because that's more of a guard trait, typically. Those guys walk by 75, too. Oh, seal blocking. Oof. They're using a little bit more aggressiveness. And there we go. So I don't know about you, but honestly, I, I normally don't do this very often. I feel really good about what we saw. To where we don't have to watch the second game. Right now, yeah. Yes, like, right I might, now. I might have my own time, like, later or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but for sure. I but I feel pretty good about <laughs> what we yeah. saw to make an evaluation. I agree. Okay, cool. Why do you have to put him as his OT? He's a center. Because he was originally listed as a tackle. Ah, makes sense. There we go. So maybe he transitioned from tackle? I don't know. Uh, cool. So, strength standpoint, eight. Pretty self explanatory. Ten. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. Nine there. Nine. Missed like one or two blocks in terms of awareness, but still did a really good shoving transition. 
same thing. Maybe once or yeah. twice got a little bit too low. Maybe once or twice got a little bit in the, in the neck area, but overall pretty yeah. good. Mm, nine there. Again, same kind of thing. Just one of those things where he's able Movement to get skill. Nine there, too. The same kind of thing. Just able to do it, but you're just not really at that elite level yet. This is interesting. Because we didn't really get to see him utilized in a man scheme. Yeah. And I almost wonder if he'd be better. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. Because maybe. in zone, you're naturally going to be blocking a little bit more in space. Because you're yeah. worried about protecting your zone. So I'm curious if you were doing a one on one matchup a little bit more often. <laughs> or a yeah. double team that might he might end up doing better. So I'm gonna go with an eight from that standpoint. I probably should be going with a seven, but I, actually, I, I I'd I'd say a seven. I actually think he has more man potential than so. Angles were good. This is where we kill him. And that might yeah, be F. too high. <laughs> yeah, just let's just be generous and say That's, three. Yeah, that's well because we did get to see him a pull. We did. He actually showed yeah. he can get out. There were one or two plays in which he actually got up and made the and got his hands up. So I can't mark him to a full one, but yeah, yeah it's it was disgusting. Uh, and then from that standpoint, we're gonna go with nine. So uh, most of these are actually nines. So I'm gonna go with. Even there, minus one, and then this minus, is so minus seven, it's an 83. Yeah, your thoughts on the overall grade and any specifics? 83? Mm -hmm. It seems a little generous to be honest, just seeing it, but I, I guess it's, it's not awful. One thing I will say is a lot of my grades right now do seem generous. I don't know why, but, like, they're really, really high. I I might end up changing that. I might, like, knock everyone down, like, a point yeah. or two at some point. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, is there anything from a specific trait-wise that you might mark down? Because maybe uh, I will. I probably will. Honestly, I mean, yeah, I, I don't... That's an eight, maybe. That's yeah. an eight, maybe. Yeah. I'd also move down the zone man capabilities, but personally, that's just me because I feel seventh. Yeah, shit. Sorry. Yeah, that I feel like that eighty is more of a appropriate grade at the moment. It's like a borderline two or three. For me. <sighs> yeah, I guess. He gives me, I feel confident based on what I saw, is he gives me a lot of Mason Cole vibes. Now, mm -hmm. I say this in the sense that Mason Cole was a lot more of a zone blocker than he is, but from a mental yeah. standpoint, I think they're similar, and from a strength, anchor, recovery, whatever, uh, pass blocking better than run blocking type of perspective, stylistically, from the skill set perspective, I think they're very similar from that standpoint, too. Yeah. So. Interesting. Anyone that he kind of reminds you of that you've watched over the last couple of years? Mm -hmm. Nobody off the top of my head, to be honest. What do you like him in Denver? Not really. I, I We run more of a zone style scheme, I've I think, and I, nah, I just don't feel like it'd be a great fit for us. Very fair. Well, with that being said, uh, oh, uh, games watched. South Carolina. If you guys would like to watch more, I highly recommend doing so to make your own evaluations on him. Uh, feel free to check out his other games as well. Uh, the main one being the other 19 game. Versus, was that Arkansas? 
Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. So the Ole Miss game, you guys can go ahead and watch as well. Maybe watch some of his older tape if you guys are into that. But I probably will on my own time uh, as well later on as we get closer to the draft and, and everything like that. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, learned a thing or two. Don't forget to like yeah. and subscribe for more content like this over the course of the next coming weeks and months. But for now, hope you guys have... Oh, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, I'm all right. Cool. For now, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Peace out.